of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Every day, Monday through Friday, there's top entertainment all day long when you set your radio dial to NBC. Listen for Double or Nothing and you'll hear one of radio's funniest quiz shows. Yes, Walter O'Keefe consistently comes up with great comedy entertainment Monday through Friday on Double or Nothing. Listen and you'll agree. And then there's the program with a heart, Strike It Rich. The grand entertainment that Warren Hull brings you every day on Strike It Rich is just what the doctor ordered if you suffer from the housework blues. From Chicago, Tommy Bartlett brings you welcome travelers and interviews with the many interesting guests who each day pass through the Windy City. And for more fun, listen for Bob and Ray, those two zany comics. And then there's music and charm with Dave Garraway. So remember, every day, Monday through Friday... Chase your blues away with the wonderful daytime programs on this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now, here's today's adventure with the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Jailbird. On October 8, 1939, Jim Hackett, serving a life term for armed robbery and murder, escaped from a Texas state prison farm. He was assisted in his escape by a woman believed to be his wife. A statewide manhunt was carried on by all law enforcement bodies. Just after dark, two days later, in the town of Oak Bluff, Texas, a woman climbed the stairs to a room above a hardware store. That you, Sam? Yeah. Hurry up, get in here. Here's your sandwiches. What took you so long? They run out of ham. Had to send out for it. You should have got something else. How many times I got to tell you not to hang around outside? Well, you wanted ham. I'd have brought you cheese or something else. You'd have got sore like you did yesterday. I didn't want you... Shut yelling. up. You talk too much. Give me that letter I give you. Yeah. Jim, well, What's I, the matter with you? Nothing. You're shaking all over. What's the matter with you? I, I think somebody's seen me. What are you talking about? When I was in the cafe waiting for your sandwiches, this man, he kept looking at me. Cop? I don't know. He didn't have no badge or nothing. Could have been one of them hit constables. Did he tell you? I don't know. I came back here as quick as I could. Turn out the light. What for? Turn it out. Well, what you gonna do? I'm gonna pull this shade and take a look. Yeah, there's a man out there. Stand across the street. Come on over here. Either one. Well, let me see. Keep the face away from that window. But how can I see if you don't... Quit let... talking and look. Either one that was in that cafe? Yeah. He's a cop. You I couldn't help Shut it. Shut up. You and that blonde hair of yours. Maybe I ought to die. I could die back real quick. Too late now. You should have thought of that before. Well, what are we going to do? I don't know yet. i got to figure. Jim, I'm mean, down the street, them two men. Yeah, ain't no doubt about them being cops either. Sheriff and one of his boys. Well, maybe they ain't after us. Maybe they don't know. Will you know... shut up? we got to get out of here. Come on. Well, come on, will you? Ain't we going to take our stuff along? Are you crazy? Come on. No, wait a minute. Huh? All right, let's go. Not that way. What? We're going out the back. There ain't no way out Don't the back. Don't talk so loud. We'll make it down the fire escape. Uh, I'll get out first. Uh, don't leave me in here. Well, you quit talking so loud. Come on, give me your hand. Okay. Come on. Uh, come this way. Wait a minute. I want to close the window. All right, keep going. I'm right behind you. All right. Well, move, move, will you? Get out of the fire escape. Let me alone, will you? Okay. Now, let's see. Jim. Huh? Come around that corner. Hold it there, you two. Why, well, you did it. Come on. You killed him. You killed a cop. One less after us. Pick up your feet. Come on. The couple ran on, leaving Constable Simmons dead in the alley behind the hardware store. Shortly afterward, a witness reported seeing a man and woman jump into a car, stop for a traffic signal, and force the single occupant to drive off at high speed. All police units within a 100-mile radius were immediately alerted. 
Fifteen minutes later, Texas Rangers Jace Pearson and Clay Morgan approached a highway junction 20 miles south of Oak Bluff. There's a main road up ahead, Jace. Report said they were heading this way. I'll set up a roadblock at the junction. Pick them up if they try to pass. I reckon they could have turned off before they got this far out? Maybe, but it's more likely they'd try to get as much distance as they can between them and Oak Bluff. The main road's the best. Clay, car coming up that highway now. Yeah, it sure looks like them. Boy, they must be doing 90. Hang on. There they go. They're really hitting it. Afraid we're not going to be able to keep up with them. This horse trailer slows us down too much. Yeah, this upgrade doesn't help any. Sure wish I could try a few rifle shots at them. Yeah, you can't risk it, not with that other man in the car. Well, we're losing them, Jace. They're already over the top of the hill. I better get hold of headquarters. Unit 10 to KTXA. KTXA to Unit 10. Go ahead, Unit 10. This unit pursuing car believed to contain Hackett and his wife. Direction south along State Road 292. 10-4. Unit 14 approaching your position from north. We'll inform that unit to set up block. 10-4, unit 10 clear. KDX out. Yeah, with 14 waiting for them down the road, I don't feel so bad about that getting out of sight. And they probably saw us coming after them, though. Take a good look down every side road we pass, Clay, just in case they decide to turn off. Jace, there they are, halfway down the hill. Yeah, didn't get as far ahead as I thought. Look at them weaving. Must have had a blowout or something. I think we're gaining a little. They're not going to make that curve up ahead, Jace. They're going off the road. Over the embankment. Keep on your toes when we stop. I doubt if anybody's going to walk away from that wreck. Poor guy that was with him, he probably got it too. There's the car in that gully. Don't see anybody around. They must all still be in the car. And get down through here. Yeah. Over there, Clay. Huh? By that mesquite part way down. Yeah, it's a man. It's been thrown clear when the car turned over. It's not Hackett. It's like it's the fellow that owned the car. He dead? Yeah. Hey, Jace. What's the matter? This fellow didn't get killed in the wreck. He's been shot. Let's get over to that car. Watch it. Anybody's inside. Can't be much left of them. We better be sure. Careful of the broken glass. Uh Uh-huh. They're not in here. No. But look at that. What? That hand throttle. Pulled out all the way. That's why the car was weaving before it went off the road. There was nobody in it but a dead man. You figure Hackett and his wife got out, pulled out the throttle, then just let the car go? Probably. That would account for why we gained on them coming over the hill. And they're bound to be around here somewhere on foot. Yeah. Let's go see if we can pick up a trail. We went back to our car and notified headquarters of what had happened. Then we unloaded our horses and began combing the area. At noon the next day, a rancher five miles west of the scene of the wreck informed us that two of his horses had been stolen the night before. We figured that Hackett and his wife had gotten away. We drove to the lab at Austin and started going over the articles taken from the room in Oak Bluff where the fugitives had been hiding. Our first break was a crumpled sheet of paper which had been removed from the wastebasket. It was the beginning of a letter in Hackett's handwriting to a man named Len. It had been discarded because of an ink blot. The gist of the letter was for Len to meet Hackett, but it didn't say when or where. We felt this could be a lead, so Clay phoned the warden at the pen to find out about Hackett's prison associates. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Spell that last name again, will you? Okay, I've got it now. Thank you. So long, Warden. Any luck? Yeah, maybe. A man named Len Jeter was Hackett's cellmate for nearly two years. He's still in the pen? No, finished his full term about six months ago. Let's see what the files say about him. It's a pretty long chance, Jase. Hackett might not have rewritten that letter, and could be he didn't send it. Men like Hackett don't write letters too often. When they do, it's usually for some special purpose. I'd say it's fairly likely he sent the letter. Yeah, it's worth a try anyhow. Let's see, Jeter's file ought to be down a little further. I sure hope we turn up something that gives us a lead to hack it. Uh-huh. Here we are. Pull his file, Clay. Jaeger, Jinzo. Here it is, Jeter, Land. Let's take it over to the table. Yeah. A nice fat folder. Whoever he is, this boy's no beginner. Neither is Hackett. Probably got a lot in common. Here's a mugshot of him, Jace. Looks like he wanted to chew up the camera. Yeah, turn the page. See what kind of a record he has. Mm-hmm. 16 arrests, five convictions. Let me see it a second. This should be some help. What's that? He's lived at the same place for the past 20 years when he wasn't in jail. Mm-hmm. Just outside Fuller. Jeez, if he doesn't know anything about Hackett, we might have trouble making him talk. Hey, look at this under remarks. Refuse to talk. Refuse to talk. 
No voluntary statement. Well, if he's still at home, maybe we shouldn't try to make him talk. Well, what do you figure to do? Watch Len Jeter's place without his knowing we're there. If he is taken off to meet Hackett, we want to be right after him. <laughs> contacted the sheriff at Fuller, Texas, and told him what we had in mind. Then we drove out to Len Jeter's place. It was a run-down house at the foot of a hill just off the main highway. We took up a position on top of the hill where we could watch the house without being seen. After an hour, we saw Jeter come out of the house and begin chopping wood. For the next two days, he made no effort to leave his property. Clay and I watched during the day, and the sheriff's deputies took over at night. Toward noon of the third day, we lay on the brow of the hill watching Jeter move around his backyard... It gets hot out here around the middle of the day. Uh-huh. I'm beginning to think maybe he never got Hackett's letter, Jason. Uh, maybe not. He doesn't do anything but hang around the house. Doesn't even go out for groceries. We'll keep watching. He's got to go somewhere sooner or later. Yeah, but when? That's what we'll have to wait and find out. We don't know when Hackett wants to meet him. Yeah, just since he's not in any hurry to go anywhere today, he could be barking up the wrong tree, you know. Jeter's our only lead to Hackett. One way or another, we got to stay close to him. Yeah, I reckon you're right. Hey, here's the sheriff. Howdy, Jase. Clay. Better keep low, Sheriff. Oh, yeah. Still nothing, huh? Yeah, not yet. Can your deputy take over again tonight, Sheriff? Well, sure, Jase. But I just don't see... Hey, what's that? Cheater. Usually does some target practice about this time of day. Oh. Well, like I was saying, I can't see why you don't let me go down there and pick him up. I've had him in town before. I reckon between the three of us, we could make him talk. You didn't seem to have too much luck making him talk the last few times you took him in. It could be with three of us, he'd be even more close mouthed. Oh, I admit he's tough, and he don't do much talking. But you fellas could sit out here a month without getting any place. Sheriff's right, Chase. Maybe we should take him in. Okay. I sure wish there was some way to save this lead in case he doesn't talk. So do I. But I don't know what it'd be. Wait a minute. I got an idea. Clay, suppose you take Len Jeter in alone. I don't get you, Jace. Sheriff, can you fix me up with an old suit back in town? Well, sure, Jace, but what for? We're going to do a little play acting, all of us. When I change clothes, I want you to lock me up. I'm going to be one of the toughest gunmen in Texas. And you and Clay are going to treat me just that way. What do you got in mind? You bring Len Jeter in and put him in a cell with me. Maybe after we've been together a while, he and I'll have a nice, friendly little talk. I don't know, Jace. If he ever finds out you're a ranger, we're finished. It's a chance we'll have to take. Give the sheriff and me an hour, Clay, and go pick up Len Jeter. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. If you want your child to have the best elementary schooling you can give him, won't you get a pencil and paper and take down the address I'm going to give you at the end of this message? Unless we start preparing now, in a few years, our public schools will be as far behind times as the, the little red schoolhouse. Now, because of the huge increase in our birth rate during and after the last war, it's estimated that by 1956, there will be some 7 million more children in elementary schools than there are now. Now, we must start preparing at once. More equipment will be needed, textbooks, playgrounds, and above all, more elementary school teachers. To help assure your child a proper education, join and work with local groups and school boards. And for free information about how people in other communities are improving their schools, write to this address, National Citizens Commission for the Public Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York, 19 New York. That's National Citizens Commission for the Public Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York, 19 New York. Now, back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Jailbird. After I changed clothes, the sheriff locked me in an empty cell at the county jail. Two hours later, I was still there, alone. It was pretty evident Len Jeter hadn't talked. Then I heard the outer door open and close. Clay and the sheriff came along the corridor with Jeter. I stood close to the cell door and waited. All right, now, look, I tell you, you got no right to put me in here. I ain't done nothing. Come on, Jeter, now keep moving. You got no right to lock me up. We're not through talking to you yet. Oh, I'll tell you something, copper. 
Even if I knew where Jim Hackett was, you wouldn't get nothing out of me. Maybe you'll change your mind. Lock him up, Chef. You, Finnerty, get back at the cell door. What for? Now, look, Finnerty, we don't want no more trouble out of you. Move back. Ah. I ain't going no cell with nobody. You put me in a cell alone. The house is full. You'll take what you get. Don't worry, Jeter. You'll get along with Finnerty here. He's just like you, only worse. I don't want to be in a cell with nobody. I don't want you in here with me, neither. Get in there, Jeter. And you, Finnerty, you're coming with us. You gonna let me out now? Not yet. We found somebody who might have seen you rob that liquor store. Nobody's seen me rob nothing. Come on, Finnerty. Why don't you come get me? Why, well, you warn me. Hold it, Sheriff. Now, look, Finnerty. You've already given us a lot of trouble. Don't make it worse for yourself. You gonna come quiet? All right. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, you in there. Keep off that bottom bunk. It belongs to me. You paid for it? Just stay off it. I'll find Johnny when I come back. Come on, I'll... come on. Take your hands off me. Hey, all right, Finity. Come on, let's go. He said take your hands off Here. me. Put the cuffs on him, Sheriff. Here. That'll keep you from getting too frisky. Dirty cops. Come on, get moving. Think you're going to make me talk. You better start thinking again. Hey, we don't need no talk now. We got a witness. Witness? Who are you trying to kid? Keep your mouth shut, Finnerty. I've heard just about enough out of you. You haven't heard nothing yet. Get moving. I told you before, keep your hands off me. Keep moving. Pretty smart, Ranger. I wish there were just one of you here. I'd show Come you. Come on, Finnerty. We don't want any more trouble from you. <laughs> I reckon you can relax now, Clay. Yeah. Forgot myself for a second. Boy, you tough. They almost had me fooled. I still have to convince Jeter. You get anything out of him? Not a word, Jace. You were right about that. You search his place? Uh Uh-huh. Nothing. Well, what's the next move? I'll stay in the sheriff's office for half an hour, and you can take me back to Jeter. When Clay and the sheriff took me back to the cell, I could see Jeter was curious. I said nothing to him. About an hour, I sat on the bunk, ignoring him. For another 30 minutes, I paced around the cell. Jeter watched me constantly. Several times, he started to speak and then thought better of it. Finally, he couldn't stand it any longer. Where are you from? Hey, you. Finity. You talking to me? Yeah. Ask where you was from. No special place. I've been all over. Hmm? I ain't seen you around this part of the country before. No, don't reckon you have. What you in for? They say I knocked over a liquor store. What, did you? You sure ask a lot of questions, brother. You know, for a while I wasn't sure. I was thinking you was a cop. (laughs) That's funny. I was thinking the same thing about you. You know something? I still think you are. You think I'm a cop? Wouldn't be the first time they put one in my cell trying to make me talk. You crazy, I know cop. Yeah, that's what they always say. Hey, you're not going to get anything out of me. Hey, Fendi, you got it all. You're wasting your time. Go on, rattle the bar, tell your pals to come get you. I'll use you hanging around here. Look, you ever hear Jim Hackett? Maybe. Well, I'm a friend of his. That ought to tell you I ain't no cop. Anybody can say he's a friend of Jim Hackett. Where you live? I got a place right outside town. I bet you have. What are you? Deputy, ranger, what are you? And none of them. You see that place of mine, you know it wasn't no cop's house. Hmm. I don't reckon I care about seeing it. Now let me be, brother. I got some thinking to do. We sat in silence for the rest of the afternoon. A little before six, the sheriff took me out of my cell. Jeter was to be released an hour later and taken to the bus station. I went over there ahead of time, bought a newspaper, and sat on a bench in full view of the entrance and waited. At 7.15, Jeter came in. I pretended not to see him. He walked over to where I was sitting and stood looking at me. Oh, Finley, see the sprung you. Huh? Oh, it's you. What are you doing, tailing me? I ain't telling you or nobody else. They let me out. I'm going home. Is that right? Go on, beat it, copper. Finity, for the last time, I ain't no cop. You say they let you out? Yeah. How come they didn't take you home? Well, they didn't have no car handy. Give me a bus fare instead. Ah, you ought to get a better story than that, copper. Now, beat it. I want to read my paper. Look, Finity, where are you heading? You'd like to know, wouldn't you? Okay, copper, I'll tell you. I'm going to Oklahoma City. You gonna make something out of that? Bus for the north don't leave or... Eight tomorrow morning. Mm, I just found that out. Reckon I can kill time till then. I'd just as soon do it alone. 
I want to show you something, Fendi. What? I just want to prove I ain't no cop. How about you coming out to my place? I'll feed you, give you a flop for the night. Huh? I'm okay right here. Besides, I got to go to Oklahoma City in the morning. The bus comes in here long for you. You can catch you near my place. How about it? Well, okay, I got nothing to lose. I reckon if you're going to keep tailing me, you might as well feed me. There. You believe me now? Yeah. Don't look like a cop's place. And it ain't. Go on in. I get the light. Nice and quiet out around here. It's okay. And it ain't no cop's place. No. Don't reckon it is. You uh, like bacon eggs? Sure. And I'll fix it some, huh? Uh, what you faking of doing, Oklahoma City? That's my business. <laughs> you know, Fennedy, you're okay. That's good. <laughs> You know how to keep your mouth shut, and that's something I like. Sixteen times they hold me in, I never spill nothing, not once. You and me, we're, we're alike. Maybe so. Come on out here. I want to talk to you while I'm putting the bacon on the stove. What about? I got an idea. You uh, got something special to do in Oklahoma City? Nothing special. Just going up to take a look around. Maybe huh? pick up a buck or two. Yeah. I kind of figured that. How about coming along with me tomorrow, huh? See, you get some real dough. Doing what? Remember I told you I was a friend of Jim Hackett? Yeah. Yeah, him and his wife, they got something real big lined up. They want me in on it. What kind of job is it? I ain't sure. I think it's a refinery payroll. Jim said it was close to a quarter million there. You want to come along and cut in on it? How do you know Hackett will want me in on it? Look, Fanny, Jim and me were cellmates together. Anything I'd do is okay with Jim. Hackett staying around here? About 100 miles south. It's kind of hot right now. Him and his wife are hiding out in the shack down there. What time are you pulling out in the morning? I figured on getting a five o'clock bus. Ain't many people around that hour in the morning. I gotta make sure there ain't no cops telling me. Well, how about it, Finley? Well, let me think it over. I'll let you know before morning. Before we turned in for the night, I agreed to go with Jeter and work on the job with Jim Hackett. We got up at four the next morning and took the five o'clock bus south. Jeter kept a sharp lookout for police who might be following. I knew Clay would be on our trail and hoped he'd stay far enough behind to avoid being seen by Jeter. He did. And toward noon, Jeter's suspicions relaxed. After an hour layover in a place called Snake River, we got on a local bus which took us ten miles out of town. We walked another three miles along a dirt road. A little before two o'clock, sighted a shack halfway up a hill. Well, there she is. That shack up ahead? Yep. Yeah. Don't look like anybody's there. Somebody's there, all right. Jim's good at covering his tracks. Probably got the car hid away someplace. How'd you know where this place was? Jim wrote me a letter. Gave me a map on how to find it. Told me to burn it as soon as I knew how to get here. When did he send you this letter? Two, three days ago. Yeah, it seems I read something about him being in the scrape the past couple of days. You sure he hasn't changed his plans? Nah, not Jim. He make up his mind to do something, he does it. All the cops in the world can't stop him. Sure, we'll be glad to see him. I reckon he'd be pretty glad to see him. Put your hands up. Huh? Jim, put the gun away. It's, it's, it's me. Oh, yeah. Well, you're lucky I didn't plug you. Seen two guys coming up the hill and thought you was cops. Who's this? A friend of mine. I didn't tell you to bring no friends. How about letting us come in, Jim? Oh, right, come on. All right. What's up? She went for grub. Ain't that kind of dangerous? She's pretty easy to spot. She dyed her hair. And you let me worry about her being seen. Sure, Jim. Who are you, mister? I told you, he's a friend of mine. My name's Finnerty. Well, I don't care what your name is. What are you doing here? Oh, well, Jim, don't be that way. I brought Finnerty here because I figured you could use extra man. If I'd have needed a man, I'd have told you. Me and Sal and you can handle this job easy. We don't need nobody else. That's the way you feel about it. Reckon I'll be moving along. I never stay where I'm not wanted. You ain't going no place. Not until no. I tell you to. Now, look. Shut up. How do you know this guy's all right? He's okay. He was in a clank with me. How long you known him? Well, since yesterday, but... Yesterday? Are you crazy, lad? Look, you can use me, I'll be glad to stay. You don't want me, I'm moving along. You can use him, Jim. He's okay. You should have heard him talk to them cops over at the county lockup. He don't take nothing from nobody. Now, how about using him? We ain't using him. 
And I ain't letting them leave here and spill it all over the country where I'm hiding out. You don't have to worry about that, mister. I'm not the talking kind. That's right, Jimmy ain't. You don't have to worry about Finley. See, I got to get rid of him. Now, wait a minute. Shut up! You. Get over in that corner while I figure out what I'm going to do. Sure. Now, wait. Come here. What do you want? You got a gun? No. Put your hands over your head. I want to make sure. I told you I didn't have a gun. You give me that gun, you dirty... Oh, there you are. You too, Jeter. Finity, what's this all about? My name's not Finity. You're both under arrest. A cop. I knew it. But he can't be a you cop. You stupid... Turn around and keep your hands up. Keep them up. You got no sense, Jeter. A quarter of a million bucks right in our hands, and you got to bring a cop here. Well, how'd I know about him? You ought to watch who you take up with. Somebody should have told him that before he took up with you, Hackett. All right, you two. Get moving. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Throughout the remainder of the day, NBC will bring you more great entertainment to brighten your listening. The First Nighter, starring Barbara Luddy and Olin Soule, will bring you an amusing drama of a man who made gold at a dollar a minute in his basement workshop. Then, Miss Margaret Truman will step before the NBC microphones to introduce talented stars in khaki and blue. And for another amusing play, listen to the Theater Guild on the Air production of The Bishop Misbehaves, with an all-star cast including Charles Lawton, Josephine Hull, and Vanessa Brown. In the mirth and melody department, Phil Harris and Alice Fay will star in a bright 30 minutes of enjoyable, relaxing entertainment. Be sure to hear Phil and Alice and their Court of Royal Jesters later today. Remember, too, that Jack Parr will come a-calling tonight with the $64 question and a program packed with question marks and laughs. So, for fine entertainment, always tune to the three familiar NBC chimes, your invitation to the best in radio listening. And now back to the conclusion of today's Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Ranger Clay Morgan apprehended Sal Hackett on her way back to the shack where she and her husband had been hiding. She was sentenced to 20 years at the women's prison at Gory. Len Jeter received a 30-year term for obstructing justice and conspiring to commit armed robbery. Jim Hackett was found guilty of murder with malice and died in the electric chair at Huntsville. This is Joel McRae. There are a good many stories that the Rangers tell about some of the so-called bad men they've picked up over the years. They tell about one in particular whose bark was truly worse than his bite. The story goes that this so-called bad man came into a saloon one night flourishing a pair of pistols and ordered all the people over in a corner saying that he was the roughest, toughest man in the whole state of Texas. He then sat down, still pointing his guns at the frightened customers, and ordered the bartender to bring him a drink. What'll you have, sir? asked the bartender. Bring me a glass of milk, he replied. Milk, said the bartender. For the roughest, toughest man in the state of Texas? Well, then, answered the bad man, put it in a dirty glass. (laughs) So long, folks. See you next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Next, it's The Chase on NBC.